The latest ship to arrive in Elite Dangerous, the Type 8 medium freighter, lands in the game in paid early access tomorrow as I speak these words. Just as the previous early access candidate the Python Mark II becomes free to access alongside the much anticipated rebalance to both on foot and ship based engineering. We've had access to the Type 8 for the last week as part of the content creators partner program and in this video we'll go through just what the ship is capable of. First things first, of all the many disciplines in Elite Dangerous it will likely come as no big surprise that the Type 8 is not really designed for nose to nose combat or AX activities. Like all the ships in Elite Dangerous it can, technically speaking, multi roll just about any activity and one of the things I love about this community is that someone somewhere is going to dominate in PvP or a high level conflict zone with a T8 or almost certainly take down a Hydra with one. I'm quite comfortable saying it won't however be me. When it comes to more run of the mill combat operations the Type 8 as you'll see from what follows is designed with a slant more towards speed, manoeuvrability, survivability and escapability. As you'd expect it is at its heart a high speed medium class freighter and I have to say it excels in that role. If you're happy to forego the shield you can squeeze 406 units of cargo capacity into its low slung frame or a still very healthy 374 units with a class 5 shield. With dirty drag drives I was able to get a boost speed of 479 when shielded and fully laden with cargo and 530 when it was empty. As you can see from the footage on screen now it's also extremely manoeuvrable with those same drag drives. And all of this, let's not forget, comes with the Type 8's ability to get into a medium sized pad at an orbiting or surface outpost and its native supercruise overcharge support. If you've not already used it native supercruise overcharge is a very different experience to supercruise overcharge in a ship that doesn't natively support it. That covers the not so good and the designed for roles but what about other activities in the Elite Galaxy? Out of the box the T8 sports an extremely industrial look absolutely befitting from the lake on stable of freighters. But those two arms sticking out at the front also house two of the ships 5 class 1 hardpoints. There's also a class 1 hardpoint on either side of the cockpit, another centrally mounted on the ships dorsal section and a further class 2 underslung at the rear. That's 6 hardpoints in total. Any multi discipline miner worth their platinum will tell you those are about the right numbers to accommodate every tool you need to strip mine any rock, laser, surface abrasion, subsurface and core detonation. Couple those facts with the glass bubble from the cockpit, the inherent manoeuvrability the ship has, its carrying capacity and its size and I'm happy to report that with a small amount of engineering I was able to create a very capable mining ship indeed. I ran standard mining lasers on the dorsal mount and on either side of the cockpit. An abrasion blaster and a subsurface missile launcher on the arms and a seismic charge launcher underslung at the rear. I had a pulse wave analyzer in a utility slot and either two or three collector limpet controllers depending on how patient you want to be when collecting balanced against how much cargo you want. In the end I settled with 192 cargo, 3 times 5 a collector limpets, a 3 a prospector, a 2 a refinery and a detailed surface scanner. I was easily able to slip around the outside of a targeted asteroid to use the abrasion blaster, subsurface and seismic charges and then comfortably get to the inside once the charges had successfully cracked the rock open. Once I left the targeted rings with a full load I still had a very usable engineered jump range of around 26 light years and of course the inherent SCO ability to get me to a cell station ahead of any pirates. All these tools coupled with an overcharged power plant, dirty drag drives and a weapon focused distributor with cluster capacitors made for a very competent and it has to be said enjoyable to use mining ship. 
Given the industrial slant of the T8 and the placement and availability of weapon slots I do think that obviously primarily hauling and secondarily in mining that the T8s true worth are centred. But those two more obvious use case scenarios are not its only strength. Without any really seriously hardcore engineering the T8 can also turn its hand to exploration as well. Without opting for lightweight modules and just engineering the frameshift drive for range and, with use of a class 5 Guardian FSD booster, the T8 can garner a very acceptable 50 odd light years of range with an AFMU, minimal cargo space, a repair limpet controller and 4 SRVs. That build also comes with a 7A fuel scoop by the way. There's obviously a bigger footprint when it comes to landing the thing than something like a DBX or an ASP scout but it's certainly not prohibitive. Especially when you consider that the minimal build I've mentioned can do Shinrata to the witch head sector in 22 jumps. Not too shabby for something that looks like a crossbreeding experiment between the Millennium Falcon and a bin lorry. There is an issue with deploying and recovering the SRV from the T8 at the time of recording. Bear in mind that we're not looking at the ship in a production environment but in the preview build we have the SRV can't actually get out from underneath the very low slung hull. Frontier are however aware of the issue. When the Type 8 launches in early access on Wednesday the 7th of August it'll be available at two price points. The standard package unlocks the Type 8 in its base form at appropriate shipyards and comes in at 16,520 arcs. The Stellar Edition unlocks the Type 8 and gives you access to a deployable unengineered but A rated pre build version that is bundled with a ship kit and extra paint job and that comes in at 33,000 arcs. We've had it confirmed by Frontier that the Type 8 will remain in early access for 3 months as was the case with the Python Mark II and will therefore be released into the game for in game credits only on November the 7th. The aforementioned Python Mark II will be coming out of early access with deployment of the Type 8 update and will therefore be available for in game credits from Wednesday the 7th of August. There's also a selection of new paint jobs for the Type 8 expected into the ARC store very soon some examples of which you can see on screen now. And Frontier did mention on last weeks livestream that there's a new ship kit for the Python Mark II called the Fang becoming imminently available as well as some more paint jobs if you're in the market. And again all of this is on top of the engineering and material gathering rebalance which also arrives in the same update. The servers will be coming offline to apply the update at 7am UTC on Wednesday the 7th of August and are not expected to return until at least 1pm UTC. All in all a huge week for Elite Dangerous once again. Will you be trying out the Python Mark II for the first time? Are you planning on picking up the Type 8 in early access and if you are what role do you see it filling for you? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at The Burr Pit you can also join our Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find linked below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.